All right, today we're going to change uh, coupler and motor mounts on a Series 100 pump. We'll get started right now. Make sure you shut the power off to either your boiler or wherever the wires are going to the motor on your Series 100. Disconnect them. You don't have to remember where they go. It's always black to white, so you're just fine. Uh, because we're not going into the water part of the system at all, you can leave your service valves uh, alone. You can, doesn't matter. If you don't have any service valves, you still don't have to worry about draining the whole system. So let's tear it apart. We'll loosen the four motor bolts here, and we'll sepa or separate it from the bearing assembly. And then we'll take them out by hand and support the bottom of the motor and unscrew them. Now I like to leave one of the top ones in because if your hand slips off, and I'll show you in a second, the motor won't fall off. That's two. And three. I've still got the one in the top in the back here, so if you notice, if you need to take a break, it'll hang there by itself. We'll remove that one, take the last one out, support the motor from underneath. You might have to wiggle it around. All right, here it comes. We got the last one out. We'll set it aside. We'll let the motor drop backwards, which exposes your defective spring coupler, which mine isn't because it's brand new. We'll take our Allen wrench, and you hear a little pop. That's the set screw letting loose. And we'll just unscrew it until it lets go. And then we'll set the motor down on the bench, and we'll start working on it. All right, we've got the motor on the bench. Now we're going to remove the coupler from the bearing side. And we'll bring our Allen wrench in through one of the little breather holes here in the side. We'll get it right into that Allen wrench, and we'll give it a good twist, and you'll hear it pop. All right. We'll back out the set screw until it wants to come out of the hole, and we'll just drop it right out. Now, if it's not broken, if it's not cracked or anything, save it as a spare. That way, if your new one breaks, you've got the option to at least throw this on, and you'll have heat. Okay? So now we'll tear into the motor. And what you want to do is get it on a nice, sturdy bench. Get your Phillips screwdriver, and you want to remove these four screws right here. Now. The new Series 100, I've noticed on this motor bracket that they have nuts on the bottom of the screws. On some of the older Series 100s, this bottom bracket is tapped for this screw to go through. So you might have the ones with the little nuts, or you might have it where it's threaded. This one has the nuts, so we'll get it loosened up and taken out. Now, when I loosen the, the nuts on the bottom of this, they were painted and very difficult to get to. But they'll pop right out. You gotta save these because you're gonna reuse them. We'll set them aside. Okay, and then we'll go to the back side of the motor. Do the same thing. That comes out. Now what we'll want to do is we'll take the motor and we'll separate the bracket. And all we'll do is we'll lift it straight up. And if you notice before you do this right here, there's a little grounding wire. Mine's kind of red from the paint. Just make sure you get that re-pinched into place once you put the bracket back on. And I'll show you that when I get to that part. So we'll just remove the cover. And you notice the wires won't have come out with it. Just feed them through. Okay, set it aside. Now we'll just lift the motor out of the base part of the bracket. Okay, and we'll set this aside, and then we'll get to removing the motor mounts. Now we're going to take the motor mounts off the motor. Now there's a little bit of a trick to it. What you want to do, good flat, hard surface, a good healthy screwdriver, and a decent hammer. Of course, I like the big hammers. 
because I don't have any patience. All right, we'll take the screwdriver. We're going to put it behind the motor mount. Now, when I explain this, this is the reason. If you notice on the motor mount, there's an inner metal ring right in here. If you don't drive it off complete with the motor mount, it's going to be a son of a gun just to get that ring off. So the point is, is try to remove the whole motor mount at one time. So what we'll do is we've got the screwdriver behind the motor mount. We're going to lift it just a little bit and get it into the rubber part of the motor mount. And then I'm going to rotate the motor for one reason. You don't want to break this little plastic oil well. So I'm going to rotate this towards the camera. I'm going to take my screwdriver and put it down up against the motor, lift it up a little bit, tip it at about a 45 degree angle into the rubber part of the mount. And we'll hold it right there. And I'm going to grab my big hammer. And what you're going to want to do, hold it with one hand and take your big hammer. Now you guys are going to get one shot of this. And I'll try to do this without hitting anything. Hold it firm and give it a good whack. Now, if you notice, I went through the rubber piece and it didn't remove that inner ring, which is perfect because then I can show you how to do this. We'll pull it out of the rubber and it's kind of torn, which is okay because you're not reusing these. So we'll do the same thing and come at a little less of an angle so I make a mark in that inner ring of that motor mount so it'll give us a little leverage point. We'll hit it again. Starting to pop off, if you notice. And we'll just try to pry it off a little bit. If it doesn't work, we'll hit it again. There, nice, just popped off. Now throw them away, don't reuse them because that's why you're changing them, they're sagging or whatever. Now I'm gonna turn the motor around and do the same thing on the other side. Again, watch out for your oil uh, uh, tube here because it's plastic, you'll crack it. Again, down inside, lift it a little bit and into the rubber. Get your big hammer and give it a good whack. And this one came off. It didn't tear the rubber. So hopefully we can just pry it off. If not, I get to hit it again. There, perfect. Throw it away. All right, now we've got it on the bench. We'll reach over and get our new motor mounts and we'll take them out of the package. Obviously, we're not going to leave them in the package to install them. Now, if you notice, they give you directions. We don't read them, we do it Tom's way. All right, you get a set in one package, and if you notice, they've kind of got reinforcement bars on these motor mounts. The way you want to install them is there's an expansion seam that should go up on the motor. And I'll show you this right here on the motor. So we'll get the motor in here. Now you take your motor mount. You got your oil wells pointing up. You want the reinforced little rubber bars here to go 12 and 6 o'clock on the motor. In other words, your oil wells always have to stick up. So this is the way you want to put the motor mount on. Never put the expansion joint on the bottom. Always put it on the top because you want all the steel you can down here to support it. All right. We'll put them on by hand right now, and then I'm going to grab my hammer and tip it up, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tip it up. Take your hammer, and equally around that inner ring that I was talking about before, right here, tap it going in a circle until it's flush on the end bell of that motor. Sometimes they'll fall off on you. Just take your time and try not to hit the shaft.
All right, when that inner ring is flush with the end bell, that's all the farther you need to put it on. And then we'll go and do the outboard side the same way. Seam up, reinforce bars at 6 and 12 o'clock. Just get it pressed in place. Now this one, I don't like to tip up because you have the motor shaft. You don't want to ruin any bearings or anything because they are sleeve bearings. They're not ball bearings, so this is going to float. You don't want to hurt the shaft, so leave it down on the table and do it this way. All right, you'll notice the tone change once you start hitting the end bell of the motor. You'll know that you've gone as far as you want to go. This gap is normal. It's not going to hurt a thing. Okay, and you'll notice that when I put the motor bracket back on, uh, that won't come into play, and you'll see what I mean here in a second. Don't forget about your little copper wire. Your grounding wire, make sure it's on the metal and not on the seam. It has to go over the metal here. All right, and I'm going to grab the bottom part of the bracket. Bring the bracket in. And we'll just set it into the cradle. Now, when I go to set it into the cradle, you'll notice that the motor mounts have a little groove in them. That groove sits right in the bracket piece here. All right, both front and back should sit perfectly in the bracket. So we'll just drop it in. Remember, your oil, wicks, uh, your oil wells have to be straight up. All right, so we're set there. We'll grab the top bracket. And don't forget about your wires here. Your wires will feed through one of these holes, whichever one you took it out of to begin with. Mine were in the back. So we'll just feed them through. All right, I'm going to turn this and they'll come right out here. Now obviously mine are just coming out unhooked because I don't have electrical. Most of the time this will be taken off and the electrical connections will be underneath this little cap here. All right, now we've got our wires run through. Make sure that they're somewhat tight right here because you don't want to kink them as you set the bracket down. We'll set the bracket down into the grooves again, making sure our copper ground wire is here, and straight down. Okay, and they line up nice. Right in place, you got your little ground wire. Now we're going to put the little nuts and bolts back in. All right. Put your screwdriver in place and hold it with a finger. And you don't need to tighten them all at, one at a time. Just get it in there so the bracket doesn't move. Now, we've got the, the bolts and the nuts all tight. We're going to put the coupler on right now. Now, my preference is, is to put the coupler on the bearing assembly first. Now, the coupler that we took off is the casted steel. Okay, You can replace it with the same one. Rumor has it that this one is a stamp steel and they say it's quieter. It's all your choice. It's six of one, half a dozen of another. Preference is completely up to you. Because we took the cast one off, I'll put the cast one back on. All right, I've got the set screws in place. Now I want to show you this because this can hinder you putting these on the shaft. If you notice, they're sticking out a little bit. That's because you want, obviously, the coupler to slide right onto the shaft. So make sure that your set screws are not, if you look inside here, into the hole, okay? Make sure you have it backed out so you have a perfect entrance onto the shaft of the bearing assembly. All right, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on the shaft of the bearing assembly. Now if you notice on the shaft of the bearing assembly, I'll point right here. There's a dimple mark in the shaft. It's kind of a countersink mark. And then if you notice on the end of the set screw, it's tapered the same way. And I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but there's little burrs on this end that will help it lock into place. 
So we'll put that back in. All right, now I'm gonna put it on the shaft. I like to turn that little mark towards one of these vents so I can put my wrench through the vent and tighten it to the shaft. So I just take it like so, line up the hole as best you can. Now, like I said, they're tapered, so when you tighten that set screw, it'll kind of suck itself into place if you do it slow enough. Now, I know my finger's in the way. I'll see if I can give you this. Let me line it up, get it on the shaft. I'll get my wrench in here. And then if you, there you go, if you want to come around to this side, you'll see I'll start to tighten it. And if you watch the coupler, if I'm not centered, it's going to kind of pinch on the shaft. And it is, so I'm not hitting that little hole that's in the shaft. So loosen it just a hair and wiggle your coupler until you hit that hole right there. Do you see it move a little bit, I hope? And then just slowly turn it in until it starts to get tight. All right, you'll notice that this, it's set in place. I can move it. Now, you want to take your wrench, whether it's a standard Allen or I like to use these T wrenches, just give it a little twist. You don't want to over tighten it. If you over tighten it, you have a possibility of cracking the flange on this uh, coupler. So just give it a nice little snug. That's all you have to do. Pull your wrench out and you're ready to put your motor on. Now this is where you're going to have to uh, get a little flexible. I like to hold it like so. If you notice the set screw is straight up in the air, we'll take the motor and we'll get it up here and you'll get it right up to the coupler and you'll slide it on the motor and it doesn't have to be perfect again. Now, grab your wrench. Get it into that set screw and wiggle it until it drops into the taper. Mine's not dropping. So we'll back it off a little bit and keep wiggling. And it might take a couple of times. I'm supposed to know what I'm doing and I can't get it. <laughs> there we go. All right, starts to drop in, automatically guides into the hole, and it's nice, a little bit snug. Just give it a twist, and that's tight enough. The burrs will dig into the shaft, and it won't come loose because it's in the tapered hole. Now, don't let go of the motor because you're, you have it hanging by the springs of the coupler. You don't want to stretch them out, so right away, Insert it, wiggle it around, get it into place, and take one of your motor mount bolts or motor bracket bolts. And as long as you get it started, you can let it hang and take a break. Then you can go and put in all four, and we're almost ready to pump water. All right, I've got three of them tight, so we'll just tighten up this last one. And just snug. You don't need to over tighten these. It's just holding the motor in place. Just give it a little twist. Okay, that's tight enough. Now the wires are still hanging out. You want to hook them up the same way that you disconnected them. You haven't done anything with the water side, so the valves are open. Wire it, turn your boiler on, and you're ready to pump water. And I'm going to smoke.